I'm currently in Minsk, the capital of Belarus. Not Belarusia, it's Belarus. They take it very seriously with the naming. Uh, that's the independent square, the Polsce Nezalizhnosti or Polsce Nezavisimosti in Russian. Behind me is the Independence Avenue. It's the longest street in Minsk. And there we have the city council, a uh, Polish Catholic Church, the Supreme Soviet, it's the main um, uh, parliament building in Belarus, with the Lenin statue in front, and the Minsk State University. As I always like to do in post-Soviet cities, I visited the metro. The Minsk metro is the only subway system in Belarus. It's actually pretty small. Currently it has only two lines, but they will open a third one in July this year. I got off at Polsce Piramohi station. After World War II, 85% of Minsk were destroyed. The city was rebuilt, but not in the original architecture. Instead, they used the Stalinist Empire style. The architecture of this period is known for grandiose buildings and wide streets. <laughs> The Trinity suburb is one of the few sites that were not fully destroyed in World War II. Not far away is the upper town, with some of the most iconic places in Minsk, like the Church of Holy Spirit, the Old Town Hall and the Freedom Square. So I'm currently at the square of the national flag of Belarus. There we have the flagpole with the flag. I guess it's one of the biggest flagpoles in Europe, if not the biggest. And behind this futuristic building is the Palace of Independence. In 2013, the Independence Palace was opened by President Alexander Lukashenko. It's used for meetings of foreign delegations and for honoring ceremonies of, for example, important people. In the evening, I went back to the city center to enjoy Minsk at night. <laughs> 